Hello, and thank you for joining me live on Getting Real About Self-Care with me, Dr. Arjmani, and Dr. Arthi Surya, an amazing functional medicine doctor based out of Michigan. So thank you for joining while we're waiting for Dr. Surya to join. Um, please just leave, throw up a heart, let me know you're watching, and... Um, let me know where you're watching from. And now meeting me, if this is our first time meeting, I'm Dr. Ajmani. I am a pediatrician, I'm an Ayurveda consultant and a yoga instructor, and I love bringing peace and joy to people's lives through coaching and life. Hi, how are you? Hi, Dr. Ajmani, how are you? Great, it's great to see you. Thanks it's good for to see you us. too, how are you? Great. I know you I just know um, got, got done with your, done with your clinic, so thanks for joining us here. Yeah, of course. My pleasure. Great. So if you could just introduce yourself to our listeners. Sure. So hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Arthi Surya. I'm an integrative functional medicine doctor in Ann Arbor, Michigan at uh, Natural Balance Wellness Medical Center, and I'm happy to be here today. Great, great, great. And so today we're talking all about self-care. And this actually came about because I saw a post. Um, is there an echo, by the way? It's not too bad, yeah. Okay, let me see if I can fix that. Okay. Um, so we had, I had seen an Instagram post that you shared, sharing a little bit about your journey with self-care. And so I was wondering, can you just tell us a little bit about um, how that started for you? Where were you before self-care became like a priority for you? Sure, absolutely. So it's, it's a kind of a story, but um, it was kind of intertwined with my journey of um, pursuing integrative functional medicine. So after residency, I moved to Chicago, where I was working while I was doing my integrative medicine training. And, you know, up until that point, I was always fascinated by meditation and yoga. And, you know, there, the studies are really, you know, impressive, but I didn't do it, right? Like, because I never felt bad enough to do it, right? Mm -hmm. And so it was like, well, why, you know, pursue something or, you know, it's a lot of time or something like that if, you know, you don't, you don't need it. And so, but what happened was I got caught off guard, right? So in Chicago, I took a job. I knew I wasn't going to like it, but I was, I needed it so that I could do my training. And so, and I also wanted to live in a big city. So I was like, okay, you know, for a couple of years, I can handle this. And boy, was I wrong. So it was um, a job where it was primarily disease management, right? And so for me, I am very preventative minded thinking, which is why what led me down the whole integrative um, path. And while I was in Chicago, you know, there was hurdles with the first job and everything. And so I stopped sleeping. And I was like, you know, I hated going to work. And like, you know, I stopped sleeping. And then it was just like, I was a zombie walking around for so long. And, um, you know, it was, it was a struggle, right? So I saw my mood tank, my energy, like, went out the door. I, like, just didn't feel like myself. I had, like, no motivation to do anything. So it was, it was scary to see myself like that. And so then uh, when I was closer to finishing my training in um, integrative medicine, I found this amazing opportunity in Ann Arbor, Michigan. So I decided to move. I still didn't do anything about, you know, all that was going on. You know, I tried to meditate. I tried to do all those things. But if you're in fight or flight, it's kind of hard mm -hmm. to do those things. Yeah. So um, I moved to Michigan. I was kind of just hoping it would go away. Like, you know, I knew it was kind of emotionally mm -hmm. related to the job, but it didn't. And so I was still kind of stuck in this fight or flight mode. And I was like, oh, man, like, what do I do? And so that's when I started to incorporate what I was learning in the training as well as what I was learning from my mentor here. Um, and then um, started to like, you know, bring down my cortisol levels with herbs and then nature time. Then only was I able to really incorporate um, yoga. So which has been like very like the transformative practice in my life. Like I just mm -hmm. cannot say enough about it. Wow. 
Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing all that. I think um, I'm sure our listeners resonated with so much of that. I know I did. I mean, how often do we have to, like, even if we know the information, how often do we have to, like, wait until something really tanks, right? I mean, that's been the case so many times for me in my life where it's like things have to get really bad. It's almost like it has to grab your attention, you know? Like, right. It's like your body sends you subtle signals over time. And when we don't listen to it, which is like most, most of us actually, because life is just so busy, right? Um, our body then sends us stronger and stronger signals until we listen, until we pay attention. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, so I think like for both you and I, it's like this passion, right? For people to really pay attention so that it doesn't blow up, right? Mm -hmm. So that it doesn't take off time of your life. Like, you know, this was like a two and a half years of me not really sleeping, right? So mm -hmm. it was it was a good chunk of time, right? And so mm -hmm. it's not comfortable like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And sleep is so important. I mean, I, th I think back to residency. That's probably the time where I got the least amount of sleep. Mm -hmm. I know it just, you know, it when you're not getting the sleep that you need to, it can lead to, at least for me, it led to things like anxiety. Um, for sure. Finding the same joy in things in life that I would normally. So sleep is super critical. Yeah, I completely agree. Like, you know, it's interesting because it's like, you and I have talked about this. We're like, you know, you go through all this training and you learn all the fancy, you know, pathways and where the meds work and all this stuff. And then you go through it and then you unravel it. And it's like, it's about the basics, right? Like mm -hmm. we don't do the basics right. Yeah. And so, so much of like really trying to educate people, it's like listen to your symptoms um, and like really hone in on the basics first before jumping to like more complicated treatments, right? Yeah, definitely. And I mean, that's why I'm so passionate about yoga and meditation and Ayurveda because the yoga and meditation really help teach you to like tune in to how you're feeling, right. tune into your body, right. your mind, and your emotions so that you can kind of catch it sooner so that you don't have right. to wait for it to get really escalated, you know? And then the Ayurveda is all about getting back to basics, getting back to nature. And so right. um, I love that sleep was a big one for you because I think that sleep is just, it's so underrated these days. Like we're so... Um, all of us are so caught up in, in kind of the business and having our digital devices so that we can just stay up late working later and later um, and so we can kind of get put off. So, right. So tell me a little bit about how you've adjusted like your sleep patterns maybe to, to focus on that. Sure, yeah. So uh, grounding was huge for me. <laughs> like grounding really, really helped um, with my sleep. And then um, once I was like starting to get better, like, like I felt like I was coming a little bit more into balance, then only did I incorporate um, like yoga poses at nighttime. Like I mm. shut off electronics, hope ideally by nine. Um, mm. Sometimes now I try to push it and then I like, I notice that it affects my sleep and I'm like, why did I do that? But mm -hmm. um, you know, yoga poses at night, like forward bend, Janus Rashasana, um, mm -hmm child's pose so I'm just quieting everything before I go to bed so that you know you're calming the nervous system down right and then going to bed like I think a lot of people what they're doing is they're on their electronics really really you know up until they go to bed and then you know their brain is still going though they mm -hmm. may be tired and then they go to bed and then it's this non-restorative sleep and then they wake up they're fatigued and they you know, do lots of caffeine in the morning. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of this bad cycle. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, since I've gotten very diligent about it, I can, I mean, my mood is like so much better. My energy is better. Like I just feel like myself again, which is really, really nice. <laughs> yeah. I totally agree also about what you said of like having to get grounded first. Because like what you described when you were in Chicago and when you're in that fight or flight, like that's our body's natural response, but we need to kind of bring in those things to let it, let our body know that it's exactly before our body can truly relax and explore these other practices. Our body first needs to know that you're safe, that it's okay right. to do that. Right, right. Because I mean, you tell someone in fight or flight to go 
breathe or meditate mm-hmm. it's impossible like you mm-hmm. cannot do it right yeah. and then you know it gets blamed that you know meditation or yoga doesn't work it's like it does work it just you have to introduce it at the right time i think mm-hmm. Yeah. And the breath is powerful. I think that's a powerful tool to use as a mediator to kind of, because um, our breath is directly related to our nervous system, right? So, exactly. You know, um, when we're in fight or flight, our breath is more shallow. When we're in rest and digest, the parasympathetics, our breath gets deeper and fuller. And so the fact that we can control that ourselves by just noticing our breath and then consciously extending our breath, we can actually kind of train our body to enter into that rest and digest. It does take time, though. It does take time. Oh, totally. I don't know if you saw my post. I think it was like two days ago. Mm -hmm. I like, you know, the science nerds in us like want to see the objective data, too. And so I had done like a brain scan um, two months into my yoga practice. Mm-hmm. You will see, I'm still very shifted, still fight or flight, but I was doing better overall, but I was mm-hmm. still fight or flight. Then six months into my practice, I've like completely shifted the other way. <laughs> so wow. it does take time and it is powerful. You're just hacking your nervous system in a yeah. really positive way, right. which I think a lot of people need. Um, I think one of the things I realized during this time was that, you know, for me, it took like a big um kaboom if you will like Mm -hmm. to really pay attention and slow down and like regroup i think what happens for a lot of people is that this happens on a subtle level right so it's not necessarily a priority to um Mm -hmm. change things right so like low level fatigue or low level Mm -hmm. irritability or short temperedness hormonal imbalances right so i think for a lot of people it's going under the radar because it's tolerable yeah, definitely. Because sometimes it's something as subtle as just feeling a little off. Right, exactly. It's something you can't quite pinpoint, but you just know that you feel a little bit off, you know? Right. But knowing, realizing that that can be a signal that something's going on and, and to pay attention. And even if you don't know exactly what it is at that time, if you just kind of raise that question, oftentimes it will it will appear, you know, it's like, you'll see the book that you need to see at the right time, or you'll see the Facebook live at the right time that you post on Instagram. So even just kind of recognizing that within yourself that, hey, something feels a little off. Right. Um, And just kind of keeping open to what that may be or how it may show itself. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I feel, yeah. I mean, in a way, I'm. I think it's the best thing that happened. Like, yeah. I'm so thankful for that time. It sucked, <laughs> but I. I think it is the absolute best thing that happened. Yeah, and isn't that so true? What a great perspective. I can say that for my my life too. Some of the most challenging, most difficult, most miserable times of my life have actually been the biggest teachers, where I've learned so much about myself. Um, and just gain so much more understanding and things that I can now share with, with other people. Exactly. So now you can help them, you know, you know, not make the mistakes you did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Wow. Well, I would love it if, um, if after this call, if you shared, um, if, if we can figure out a way that you can share that post with us. The one. Oh, oh of course. Yeah, that would be amazing to take a look at that. Of course, um, yeah. yeah. It's always great to see the science behind. Exactly. Know, right? It really blows my mind because it's like these traditional healing systems mm-hmm. already knew all this stuff. Yeah. And it's like, okay, now we see the implications. And I think they're, and I think part of like what you and I are trying to do is saying that these um practices are very much relevant today right Mm -hmm. they will help decrease your blood pressure and keep your blood sugar under control and you know you know prevent mi or a stroke or you know Mm -hmm. all those things right so i think they are very much applicable today and the side effects are great right like more happiness creativity right like exactly improved relationships because you're feel better you're in a better mood (laughs) yeah totally like i'm a much nicer person now than (laughs) on a fight or flight (laughs) exactly exactly well that's wonderful yeah i say that all the time as well you know the um these practices have been around for thousands and thousands of years and and it's really beautiful to see um that science that the research is going on now to also show us exactly how this all works 
Um, exactly. And it's, it's really beautiful and really wonderful. Um, I have a, the, one of my first teachers in Ayurveda was also a medical doctor. Oh, wonderful. And he had said that, um, I love this, what he said, that um, Western medicine is evidence-based practice and kind of these Eastern traditions are practice-based. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think there's something really powerful about um, thousands of years of observation, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have that yet in conventional medicine, yeah. right? And it's skewed. So I think, you know, you should take the best of both worlds, like yeah. for optimal treatment. Definitely, definitely. It definitely is, I've always believed, a best of both worlds. There's a place for both. And, um, you know, people like us and doing, you know, practicing integrative practices and holistic practices, um, you know, we're combining those things together and bringing more awareness to that, I think is really powerful. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Well, great. So if um, we're kind of getting reaching a time to kind of wrap up. So if you could share kind of one kind of biggest takeaway um, for our listeners, what would it be? Biggest takeaway? Listen to your body. Do not ignore subtle symptoms because there is something underlying those telling you to pay attention and deal with it. So fix it before it becomes a, even a bigger problem down the line. Great. I love that. It's beautiful. <laughs> so tell me um, also, just as we're wrapping up, can you just tell our listeners, because we do practice functional medicine in Michigan, just tell us a little bit about what that is. Some of our listeners sure. may not know exactly what that is. And then also how people can find out more about you and reach you. Sure. So uh, functional medicine is like a, a branch of medicine where it's looking at the root cause of disease rather than just treating the symptoms. So it's really, really like um, going uphill, like, you know, uphill so that you're fixing the problem before where the, before the symptom even like, you know, shows up or just kind of covering it up. So, mm -hmm. and uh, where to find me? Like, uh, so I'm at Natural Balance Wellness Medical Center in Ann Arbor. Uh, my name on both Instagram and Facebook is Dr. Surya, so you can find me there. And yeah, this was this was a lot of fun, Sheila. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks for joining us. Thanks for taking time out of your day. And I'll of put um, in the comments. Um, I'll put links to your uh, Facebook page and um, the website for your practice in Michigan. Sounds and good. And I'll send you the brain scan. Thing, yes, so please, you please put that share in that the comment. Yeah. I know I would love to see that. I'm sure our listeners would too. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. And so thank you to everyone who joined us, who's listening. Thanks for joining. <laughs> Please throw up a heart if you enjoyed this. And also let us know if you want to see more Facebook lives like this with me and Dr. Surya talking about self-care. And if there's specific topics that you want to hear more about, please leave that as a comment. Thank you. Bye. Bye.